Jamie, good to see you here at the Racing Car Show. Last time I saw you was at Silverstone, back yeah, end of that right. Walter Hayes Trophy Ford 1600. Got to say, I admire your bravery for doing that because when you're racing British Formula <laughs> 3 to go back to Formula Ford, unbelievably competitive, and yet you did it, you made the final. Yeah, I did, yeah. So um, the Walter Hayes Trophy has been something that I've always looked at and wanted to kind of do. It's always a huge event, but I didn't actually really know much about it. And it was literally something where I sat at home um, bored not racing seeing all the other guys out winter testing in exotic countries and i just really wanted to do something so um yeah the walter hayes trophy i tweeted about it i think two days later had a drive a day later was in the car and Brilliant. yeah i just took each step as it came and it was one of those things i don't think i've actually enjoyed driving a car as much as i enjoyed driving um the 1600 formula ford car so i think that helped and obviously yeah to make the final was pretty cool it's a shame we can't really get a run in the final but yeah i enjoyed it nonetheless. Well, you are right in the middle of it with British Formula 3, racing with Double R, with Boyo, Anthony Hyatt, as we <laughs> perhaps sometimes call him. And that's the plan again for 2018, right? Yeah, I'm hoping to. I think I came into Formula 3 having stepped out of sports cars, um, made a very unusual decision to go sort of the other way, I suppose, to what most young drivers end up doing. So I knew my first year was going to be tough. I maybe underestimated how tough it was going to be how strong some of the competition was, and especially at the front, how high the level really is. So, yeah, I knew it was going to have to be a learning year. I wasn't going to be maybe where I wanted to be first in the first instance. So, yeah, I just took everything I did in each stride and kept learning as much as I could. And ideally, the second year is where I can have a maximum attack. Like we kind of saw with Enam, he really learned his craft effectively in the first year and then jumped up to a bigger team with yeah. Carlin in the second year. And we saw how dominant, dominant he was. So. I guess that's what I'd like to do. We're waiting on a few sponsors to come through and fingers crossed we can look at signing again with either Double R or maybe Carlin. Well, definitely fingers crossed about that. But in terms of that, and obviously being a lady driver, what, what's the environment like for you, the business environment of motorsport, getting out there, raising sponsorship? Um, I think it's tough for everyone. Um, obviously for me, some people will argue I have an advantage with the USP that I can go out to sponsors, but... Well, a different sector of the market might be the, the right way to phrase that. Yeah, I guess that's probably yeah better phrase like that, but uh, it's tough for anyone. It's a huge amount of money to go racing, and a lot of sponsors I end up talking to, that money could effectively be better spent, um, and I couldn't blame them necessarily when they justify where they could spend their money better. Yeah. But. For me, I think there's a really unique opportunity that I have. Um, I genuinely believe that a female can race at the top level. If I'm not on pole in Formula 3, mm. I don't think my gender's any reason for the reason I'm not yeah. on pole. It's If I broke too early into Turn 1 and lost half a tenth, then I don't think there's any reason why I can't break that bit later. It's just that I haven't done it. So, yeah, I know for a fact that I could be capable uh, physically and mentally of racing in or yeah. at the top level, and I want to have the opportunity to prove that. And I think a second year in F3, if the sponsors come on board, is really important. Well, and, and I agree with you 100%. And Tatiana Calderon starting to prove that. She went straight into the uh, V8 championship right at the end and finished third on the podium. Great result. Very heavy steering load as well in those cars. No physical issues. Yeah, exactly. I think, um, yeah, one thing for me, I've never, I came into motorsport quite late. I ne didn't necessarily have any role models or people to aspire to be mm. like and everyone asks if I look up to Susie Wolf and people like that and actually I really do in the sense that she's done it she's com capable enough of doing an F1 race distance in an F1 car that is physical and the fact that she's done it gives it's me doable. no excuse and obviously I want to be able to race in Formula 1 and not just be a development driver but the fact that she's got herself physically strong enough to do it is something I can take a lot of inspiration from what was what were your sports before Formula One, what were you good at? Uh, quite a few, actually. I sort of dabbled in hockey a little bit, so um, I actually missed England hockey trials to do the Janetta Junior Scholarship. Um, yeah. Back then, hockey wasn't actually a professional sport, and now some of my peers that I played hockey with went on to win Olympic gold, so I am ruined that a little bit. But um, yeah, other than hockey, uh, skiing was another one. But I think having had experience in different sports massively mm. helped me when I got into motorsport. Well, that's both hand-eye coordination and balance and obviously some rhythm involved there, all of which you need in the racing car. Yeah, I think the actual big thing was feel. Um, a lot of feel is required through your seat and that's how any feedback that I make on the car or how it's handling or how much faster I can carry mm. or how much more speed I can carry through a corner is based on feel. Um, and that's basically what skiing and horse riding and things like that is based on as well. So. Yeah, there's a lot of similarities. Obviously, the physical side of it's another right. thing. But 
yeah, I don't regret my decision to get involved in motorsport at all.